Thank you for all being here. So I'm going to talk about how you could, or the problems basically in integrating more technical education into sort of elite college education. So you know, there's a, the famous poem, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, or a little learning is a dangerous thing. Um, and that's sort of the approach people take to math. And, um, and so you have people who go on to government or law or, or whatever, the judiciary, um, who have a very untechnical education. And I want to think about why is it that you have people who go into fields where technical education would be extremely useful for them, um, like policymakers or government officials, but who don't actually sort of dip their toes in the water. Why is it that they feel compelled to either have like sort of a totally technical focused education or a totally non-technical focused education? Why is it that we can't have a little bit of learning um, here? Right. And so basically, so yesterday we were talking about math for the disenfranchised and Indian slums in, in Africa, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, I, I work at the LC in the Bank of England, right? I'm talking about the franchise, right? So math for the 1%. Okay. And for these people, basically, you know, for the powerful, we need politicians, government officials, lawyers, you people to actually know more math. They would be much better at their jobs if they were more technically astute. They would understand studies. We were talking yesterday about we have the BBC science programs or BBC programs that show that politicians have no idea what statistics actually mean or, or how they can be used. Right? As the problem is, it's a lack of technical education. So why is it that we don't have these sort of very powerful people who are at all numerate? And the question, and so basically it goes back to their university education. Why don't these people study you know, more STEM subjects at elite universities? And that's what, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about, you know, you know, like the top U.S. universities or Oxford or Imperial or LSE, you know, here in the U.K. So why when people, students go to these schools, why don't you have more people studying a little bit of, of technical subjects? As the first answer, and the answer you tend to implicitly, as in a lot of the press reporting, that these people are morons, right? They go to school and they should think about what they need to know and they should take more math in college, right? And so implicitly, if you just sort of convince them, you're screaming with them for long enough and say, take more math, take more math, right, that will alter their behavior. But, but as an economist, right, I think that's ridiculous. You know, people are not morons. These people, especially these people, are all very clever and intelligent people. They're choosing the education path they take for a reason. Right? There's a reason they're doing what they're doing. And if we don't understand what that reason is, we'll never get them to change their behavior. So I think the story is actually the incentives. I mean, somehow the incentives are wrong. Right? It's not that these people are idiots. Right? It's not that all those people camped down in front of St. Paul's you know, who didn't take any math, didn't know what they were doing. Right? They did what they did for a reason. And if we don't understand what that reason is, we won't get them to change, change what they're doing. So what are the incentives? Let's think of the typical person that I have in mind, the person who, who I mean, I'm an economist and I'm more formally trained, but a lot of policymakers have a more, necessarily have a broader range of skills. They don't have to be economists, or maybe even shouldn't be economists, but they do need to know some technical stuff. So let's say you want to go down that kind of a path, like law or, or government or something like that. Okay, or, so you don't want to be a scientist or, you know, a, or a quantitative you know, analyst, but you want to know something about this because you realize it'd be better for you later on in your career if you knew some, had some technical training. Okay, but what's, the other, what's your constraint? Your constraint is you absolutely, absolutely have to have excellent grades to get into a law or business school. Right? And so that is, like, that is your goal because that's your professional requirement. Right? If you don't do that, then you're, you're, not, you're gonna be unemployed. Right? And so if you're thinking, so you're planning your college education to say, okay, my constraint is this goal, getting into a top 10 or top you know, law school or top 10 business school, um, but I want to have as, as good an education as possible given that I meet this requirement. What does that requirement do for us? Suppose that you want, suppose that you're at a top university, you're at like, you know, you know LC or Imperial or, you know, MIT or someplace. If you take a math or science class at one of these places, one of these institutions, right, it's going to be really, really hard and the students who are in the class with you are going to be really, really good. Right? I mean, there's just no way around that. I mean, so you can talk about making math for the masses at, um, like at, at an elementary school level or something, but by the time you get to the top of the, you know, the cream of the you know, Anglo-American educational system, right, you're talking about really fantastic students. So unless you're one of these really, really outstanding students, you're going to get really horrible grades in these math classes, and there's just no way around that. The way they're structured now, the way the math classes are structured now, that's how it's going to work. Right? And the reason it's structured that way is because in STEM subjects especially, professors like having, like interacting with really good students. And so we have these intro classes, and the whole goal of the intro classes is to get rid of the 85% of the students who are not, you know, in the very, very the tip top of their, of the ability spectrum. Right? And so, you'll, so they deliberately and consciously, you know, give people bad grades to get rid of them so they don't have to deal with them in the future. Okay? And that means that unless you're one of those students, right, you're going to get a bad grade. 
if you get a bad grade, there's no way you're getting into Harvard Law School, right? I mean, you need a 4.0 grade point average to get into a top law school, okay? And um, people know that. I mean, so these people, everybody knows that, right? Okay, and so unless you are one of these students who think you can get an A, you know, in a probability theory class, you know, with the world's best, you know, student mathematicians, you're not going to take that class. What are you going to do instead? Well, okay, instead of taking probability theory, you could take, you know, gender roles in Bolivian puppet shows. And as long as you remember that capitalism, Coca-Cola, and American cultural hegemony are evil, then you'll get an A, right? So if you can remember those three things on your final exam, you'll get your A. And what you need to get into Harvard Law School is an A. Right? So it'd be nice if we could get an A in probability theory, but you can't do that because you're not, you're not like the world's best mathematician, but you could get an A in cultural anthropology because it takes, does not take very much in the way of analytical ability to do that. Now for me, okay, I love you know, capitalism, Coca-Cola, and American cultural hegemony. That was an option for me, right? But for most people who want to go on into government, right, that is an option, right? And that's what they do. That's why most people who go to law school and business school have almost no technical training by the time they, they advance. And so consequently, the people we have or that I deal with as government officials, you know, don't have any technical training. So the bottom line is, it is career suicide for you, and unless, you're, it's unless, you're said, unless you're really, really fantastically good at this stuff, it is career suicide to take a STEM class at a top university, you know, in the United States or in the UK. Liberal arts majors rationally avoid STEM classes like the plague because it is, will destroy them, will destroy their career. Okay. This has an enormously high social cost because not everybody goes to Harvard Law School, right? And so you have all these people who are training, you know, who are devoting their college education to making them able to do this, um, when only it's only gonna work for a small number of them. Okay. And it'd be better if everybody knew a lot more math, but people rationally choose not to do that. So what can computer-based math do to solve this problem? How can we get people to do a little bit of learning? Computer-based math can make sort of taking a small sip at these different subjects much more rewarding by teaching them how to exploit math or science skills rather than teaching them to be a junior scientist or a mathematician. Traditionally, the way if you want to learn statistics or econometrics or something, you were trained to be like an econometrician. And so the first class was how to be, like was the formal theory and, and that sort of stuff. Right? And then later, after you're doing this for two or three or four years, right, then you sort of get the payoff. Then you can actually start doing you know, time series regressions on your own. Right? But the payoff initially was zero. There's like zero skill. The only thing your intro class prepared you to do is take the next level class. Right? It gives you, it gives you no end product skills. Okay? And traditionally, you had to teach it that way because that's the way you had to learn math. Now, with computer-based math, you, got, you can sort of get to the end product, you can get useful skills you know, with, only, with an initial introductory class. So, if you get, so it's now possible, where it wasn't when I was in graduate school, right? but it is now possible to set up a class where clever, liberal arts, where, clever, where clever liberal arts students can do well in a scientific or, or mathematical subject. Okay? So computer-based math solves the first part of the problem. Right? You can, in theory, now design classes where people can use, learn very useful technical skills you know, without having to be junior mathematicians or, or scientists. The last hurdle, and the one I don't have a solution to yet, is now you have to get the seven departments to think that teaching these classes is worthwhile. And now they would they not do that. Right? Now there's very little in there for them. Right? So now it's technically feasible, and, and the challenge is to get people to think like it's actually sort of, uh, you know, for the greater social good, it's actually worth doing. Right? And that's, I think that's where the hurdle is now. Thank you.